Last time we set up Uptime Kuma to monitor servers and websites. But monitoring is only the half story. We also need a simple way to manage our Docker containers. That's where Portainer comes in. In this video, I show you how to set up Portainer, a powerful web interface that makes Docker management super easy. Portainer is a lightweight management UI for Docker. You can manage containers, volumes, networks, and basically everything that you can do in the command line as well. All from a clean dashboard, and it even provides CPU and RAM usage. So Uptime Kuma helps us monitor our services, and Portana helps us manage those containers behind those services. Let's start by configuring our Nginx reverse proxy so we can put our Portana behind HTTPS. For that, let's change into Etsy Nginx sites available. In here, we create a new file. I always use Wim and I always name my files like the subdomain. So for me, it's Wim Portana underscore this is admin hub underscore and like always, you will find every command and every file that we're using in this video today down below in the description for download. So we paste this in. Basically, it's just saying the server should listen to port 80, which is HTTP, I know, but we will change it later to HTTPS. And then we just need to change the domain here. And then we just need to specify on which port our portainer container will be running, but we leave it at 9,000 here for now. That port is free for me and we can save this. Now. After that, we change into the directory sites enabled. For me, that's change directory, double dot to go one directory back and then into sites enabled. And in here, we will create a symbolic link. And to create that, I use ln-s and then just the path to that file that we just created. And with that symbolic link created, we can test our configuration with nginx-t and it tells us that the syntax is okay. That means now we can safely reload our nginx with systemctl reload nginx. And now we can request our let's encrypt certificate for our domain portainer.thisisadminhub.com. And beforehand, I already created an A record for that subdomain pointing to the server. So this should run through. We successfully deployed the certificate Everything was successful. And now if we open up our portainer, this is adminhub.com file again. Now it's listening to port, where is it here? Port 443 SSL, which is HTTPS. With that out of the way, we can now start with our Docker Compose file for our portainer. And for that, we're going to change directory into Docker and make a new directory, portainer, and then let's change right into that directory. Wasn't that smooth? And in here, we just create a new file called docker-compose.yaml. And what we do, we just paste in the contents of the file from the download link that I provide to you, which is basically defining the service portainer using the image portainer the, with the tag latest, calling the container portainer and set it to restart always unless it's stopped with the port 9000. Keep in mind, you need to use the same port as you defined in your Nginx configuration. If for any reason you are already, you're already using the port 9000 somewhere else. And down here we have two volumes, the first one for the Docker socket, so the Docker container can actually see all the other containers, and the second one for the data of portainer, which we make into a Docker volume here, portainer data. Now we can save this file and then run the command docker compose up dash d for detached mode. It will download the image and start up the container for us. And this is all you have to do in the command line. The rest we can all do and configure inside a browser. So let's open up our browser and enter our subdomain. For me, that's portainer.thisisadminhub.com. And of course, it's all working. And on the first login, you have to define a username and a password and confirm your password. Don't forget to keep them in your password manager or else you can't log in here anymore. Well, you could always reset the Docker container, but still just write it down in your password manager. And keep in mind that your password must be at least 12 characters long to create a user. What you can also do is restore Portainer from a backup. So if you have Portainer running on a different server, you can download a backup file and then upload it here, enter the password, and then restore the portainer just with all the settings you already had there. But I want to create a new user. Just like that, we're already in. If you enjoy my content and my videos, 
please leave a like and consider subscribing. It helps out small channels like mine so much. Thank you for your support. Here in the Home tab, we can see our environments. Right now, we still don't have one, none selected, but it already detected the Docker socket on our Linux host. So let's connect to it with Live Connection. You could also go to Environment Related Environments, tick on Local, Add Environment, and then Docker Standalone, and then Start Wizard. In this screen, you scroll up, you use socket and then give it a name. We can do Docker local, for example. We already have this volume in our Docker Compose file and then say connect. Environment has been created and then let's close. And then if we go here, you can see we have the local one, which is always there, but we also have the Docker local, which means you can also create a new environment with Docker standalone and then have it on agent and deploy this docker run command onto your other server, which means he can connect to the other docker instance. You just need to put your IP address with the port and expose the port, of course, to in here. All right, let's connect to our docker local. And in here, you can see we have two containers running right now, but 19 images, eight networks and 42 volumes because I'm using this server for all my videos and testing and stuff like that. So let's check the containers. We have an uptime Kuma port container and the portainer itself, which are all running and healthy. And that's the same information like we get in the CLI. So Docker PS will show us all the running containers with the ports. So what else can we see here? If we go to images, there it is you can see every image that we have here, like the all-in-one container for Nextcloud, Collabora, Domain Check, this is all all-in-one, the AIO. If we go to page two, we have the recording backend from all-in-one. They have a lot of images here. We have Postgres, we have a Sono, the password manager, a lot of images. The equivalent CLI command would be Docker images, which shows you the exact same output. You have the Sono password manager, you have all those all in one Nextcloud containers, the uptime Kuma, the Postgres. And if ever you would like to remove one to save some space, you would need to do Docker image remove, and then let's say Postgres, and then it's deleted. But in Portainer, it's much easier. You can just tick on the image that you want to delete and then just remove it, remove the image. And just like that, it's done. Same goes with the volumes. You just click on it. And here you can see all the volumes that are on this Docker host. Same thing in the CLI again. If you want to see the volumes in the command line, you would use Docker volume LS. Then you can see all the volumes here. And if ever you want to delete one, then you would use the command Docker volume RM for remove and then the name of the volume I think I can delete this one safely and then it's deleted. And again, deleting here in Portainer is much, much easier. You can just tick on the volume that you want to delete and then click the remove button. I'm not sure which one here I can delete or which one I want to use again. The master container, maybe not. Mail cow, I will still use this for further testing, but you get the hang of it. And of course, also the Docker networks. You click on network, you can see every network that is on this Docker host. Again, on CLI, that would be Docker network LS. You get the same output. And to remove one would be Docker network remove, and then just the name of the network that you want to remove. But let's go back to containers for a second, because in here, for example, our uptime Kuma container, we could say we want to stop that one, which is the same like Docker Compose down. And just like that, we can also start that container again. So it says starting here, and then it should be up in just a second. What we could also do, we can restart it, we can pause it, we can kill it completely, or we can add a new container, say test, and then you would just need to have an image from Docker Hub that you want to use. It will pull the image, it will create a container webhook, and then you can do a bunch of different settings in here. You can map 
volumes, map a volume path on the host, and then the volume inside the container. Or you could use a already vo a volume that's already there. You can define a network. You can define environment variables, do labels, the restart policy, always or unless stopped or on failure, stuff like that. You can really see a bunch of stuff on this portainer interface. You can go to hosts and then details. You can see that my server has four CPU and eight gigabytes of RAM. You also have a user management in here so you can add new users if you're working in the team. And then here you can see we have the admin, but you can also make them normal users so they can't mess up with your containers. And this is it. Portainer is now running in Docker Compose. And it's a perfect tool to complement uptime Kuma. Kuma alerts you when a service goes down and Portainer lets you quickly fix and manage the containers. And the next video I'm planning is about how to monitor the actual resource usage of your host and your containers. That way you will not only know if a service is down, but also why. So make sure to subscribe and follow along. Until next time.